Our thought today comes from someone who writes, I'm so poor that I took the cologne sample from the magazine and used it. Someone said, you smell very good. What are you wearing? I said, page 12. Today we look at this costly perfumed oil that Mary of Bethany anoints Jesus with, which this occurred, it says six days before Passover, which means this is the night before Palm Sunday. So the Lord would go to Bethany, which was just two miles outside of Jerusalem. He would often stay there with his dearest and closest friends, Martha, Mary, and their brother Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Bethany, it was really a place, like a retreat where the Lord would go to get away from the crowds. It was a place that he could really call his home. And of course, each one of us is called to be a Bethany for the Lord. Each one of our hearts is called to be a Bethany where we invite Jesus in. Our homes are called to be a Bethany. Remember years ago in our diocese out near Front Royal, the diocese had a retreat house called Bethany House. What a beautiful name for a retreat house because Bethany is a place where the Lord would love to go. So let's make sure our hearts and our homes are a Bethany for our Lord to stay with us. So the Lord went to Bethany the day before Palm Sunday. It was from their house that he would then leave and go into Jerusalem and get the donkey and ride triumphantly into Jerusalem, which we celebrated yesterday on Palm Sunday. Martha and Mary had a big dinner for Jesus along with Lazarus. Most likely it was a, a dinner of gratitude for raising their brother from the dead. And it says that Lazarus was reclining at table, which meant this was a formal feast, a banquet. But when they reclined at table, it meant it was a very special event, a banquet. And we of course have Martha serving again. Martha is our server and Mary at the Lord's feet, representing the active life and the contemplative life. But notice Martha is no longer upset and anxious. She has learned from the Lord to serve with gratitude and with patience. And Mary takes, it says, a liter of costly perfumed oil made from genuine aromatic nard. So St. John tells us it was genuine, which meant that it came all the way from the Himalayas, from most likely Nepal, and it was very valuable, incredibly expensive. Oftentimes this was used as a dowry that it was so valuable, worth a full year's salary. So in our current, let's say, economy, perhaps worth thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in those days. And so this was um, called, sometimes called, it was called spike nard, and it had the smell of honeysuckle. And John, writing this gospel, even maybe 60 years later, still could uh, remember the, the incredible fragrance of this perfume that filled the entire house. Well, Judas got a whiff of that fragrance. And as Bishop Sheen said, he's somebody who knew the price of everything, but the value of nothing. And Judas Iscariot uh, rebuked Mary for this act of kindness. And, you know, Bishop Sheen says, if we poured this oil upon the Lord, we would do it drop by drop to show its value, but not Mary. She broke this alabaster uh, container open and poured the whole thing over the Lord, over his feet, and of course, over his head. And then she dried the Lord's feet with her own, with her hair. What a beautiful act of kindness. And Judas rebukes Mary and says, why was this oil not sold for 300 days wages and given to the poor. Thomas Aquinas says that Judas was cloaking his sinfulness under the appearance of virtue. In other words, claiming to be concerned for the poor. And yet, St. John tells us, he'd spent three years with Judas, that Judas was the thief. He, Judas was the one who was the treasurer of the, of the apostles. He held the apostolic purse, the money bag. If people gave contributions, it's, John says, Judas would steal from the Lord and from the other apostles. And then the Lord rebukes Judas. And this would, probably was the last straw. 
And this is after this, Judas would go to the chief priests and hand Jesus over. Jesus rebuked him saying, leave her alone. This she has done to prepare my body for burial. The Lord knew on Good Friday with the Sabbath coming, they would not be able to do all the proper burials and ceremonial anointings and washings. And yet the Lord God made sure that this was done to his divine son, that he would be anointed before his burial. Jesus says, you will always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Here we are 2000 years later, we still have the poor with us. And the Catholic Church is the number one charitable organization in the world to take care of the needy and the poor. And then the gospel concludes by saying that a large crowd of the Jews found out that Jesus was there and they came out to see him, but also to see Lazarus, who was quite a novelty because he had been raised from the dead. And here it says the chief priest plotted to kill Lazarus too. Not only did they plot to kill Jesus, but they wanted to get rid of the evidence. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Many people were converting, following Jesus because of the great miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead. So they wanted to get rid of the evidence. So poor Lazarus, he already died once and now they're plotting to kill him again, the poor guy. And yet it says many turned and began to believe in Jesus because of Lazarus. So what a beautiful reading we have today on this Monday of Holy Week. Let's do acts of kindness to the Lord for the Lord, just as Mary did at the feet of Jesus, perhaps a genuflection or you spending time in Eucharistic adoration or received, receiving Jesus with great reverence and Holy Communion. These are acts of kindness that we can do for the Lord as well. So let's make sure our, our hearts are a Bethany for the Lord.